Hi, everybody. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Allison Ball, and I've just recently joined Lysio as the uh, Director of Marketing and Influencer Strategy. And I am super excited to bring together three amazing brands today to talk about how to balance security and convenience with your client experience. Um, so I'd like to just um, introduce our three panelists and then talk a just a little bit about our housekeeping. So we just go to the next slide. So Yosef, I'm super excited to have you today, CEO of Relay. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, where are you located today? Toronto. Calling in from Toronto, right. And for those of us who know, the Canadians, the, the, the last T in Toronto is not Toronto, it's Toronto. So just so that you know. Um, Rob Farini, um, you are the program manager for McGowan Pro and you specialize in cyber liability and professional liability insurance. So that's going to, you were like a key anchor person for our discussion today. Where are you calling in from? So I am just outside of Boston. You probably will be able to tell that from my accent once I get going. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll tease you about that. We've got, we've got a couple of West Coasters, a couple of East Coasters and a couple of West Coasters. So um, Chris Farrell, CEO and co-founder of um, Lysio and also a CPA. Um, and I'm trying to make sure that everybody understands that Chris is a CPA because it's such a big part of the product that, we, that he's created. Um, so Chris, I know, I know where you're calling in from, but where are you today? San Francisco. San Francisco, San Francisco, smoky San Francisco today. <laughs> yeah, smoky San Francisco. And I am in uh, smoky Sunnyvale, which is in the, the Silicon Valley. So we'd love to just as we're waiting for the rest of the, the attendees to come in, um, and we are recording today. So um, just understand that um, we will make the slides and the recording available later for you to share with your team. But if you could just go to the either the, go to the chat. And uh, the way that you get the chat too, if you haven't attended a record, you know, a Zoom is just just hover your mouse at the bottom of your screen, and your chat will come up. Let us know where you're all where you're all coming from, and we'll give it probably another minute, and then we'll get we'll get started. All right, so we've got people coming in. We've got David from North Tustin, California. Thomas from Upstate New York. Uh, I always wonder, upstate New York, is that a city? It's like a region, right? Uh, Sue Mariano from the great state of Connecticut. Um, Lynn from the Woodlands, Texas. Uh, Renee from STV. I'm not sure where STV is. Um, Tessa from SoCal. Margaret from Corpus Christi, Texas. Oh my gosh, it's coming in really fast. Abby Larksburg, California. Augustine from Yonkers, New York. And Renee from St. Petersburg, Florida. Thomas is from the Catskill Mountains. Oh, awesome. There's like a vacation. That's the upscale, up, upstate New York. Very small town. Stacy from Federal Way. Brian from Portland. We have a great list of people from all over the, all over the United States. This is amazing. Um, thank you all for that. That was helpful. And now you know how the chat's going to work. So um, should we kick off? I think um, I'm going to go on mute. Otherwise, I will. I run the risk of jumping in and participating at every possible moment. Um, and, uh, and we'll just, uh, we'll kick off. And I think, um, I think, Yosef, are you starting us off or is we're going to, okay, this is what we're going to cover. All right. Yeah, we'll, let's... we'll cover these things. We'll get going. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So um, today we're going to start off with uh, Rob. He's going to cover cybersecurity trends, <laughs> anticipating risks, uh, we'll get into some best practices for you all, make sure it's all very valuable in terms of things you can walk away with. Um, we'll also be talking about managing client communication securely, as well as managing financials securely. So very topical given everything that's going on. Uh, and we'll have plenty of room, plenty of room today at the end to go through Q&A. So all of us will be at your disposal as you ask questions, et cetera. Um, we will bring up uh, a lot of the top questions at the end, so everybody in the group gets the benefit. So please uh, ask questions early and often. And so with that, Rob, I'd like to hand it over to you. Great. Thanks. Thanks, guys. I'm happy to be here today. Uh, again, I'm Rob Ferrini with McGowan Pro, and we are a professional liability uh, firm who specializes in working with professional services firms, primarily uh, in the accounting space. So I'm very happy to be here today. 
and I'm going to be talking about uh, recent trends and how to stay ahead of the bad guys because it's really not if but when a data breach happens and some of the most recent things that we've we've seen claims on is by far social engineering and social engineering is fake emails you get an email from a client that looks like it's from them and it says hey uh, i'm traveling or i'm adding a staff or um, uh, need to pay a new vendor and they say something with urgency i have to do it by the end of the day i have to uh, get this taken care of right away and they use pretexting so they know things because they've been in your system and they send you a fake email and you fall for that fake email phishing is when they just try to get you to grab the bait you know everybody thinks of their firewall and they think about the firewall as as a backstop something that's not going to allow uh, things to get in or they have all these security systems put in place so that the emails don't become a problem and you don't get these kind of things but with phishing they use pretexting and they just lob things over the fence the keywords that your business uses you know irs taxes payroll all those things are going to go through your your firewall going to go through your security and you're going to get those emails and they're just trying to get you to grab on to them. And then the third thing where we are seeing a huge uptick is in ransomware. Ransomware is they put, they lock down your computer, they encrypt your computer. And once your computer is encrypted, they uh, hold the encryption key to get your data back um, for ransom. Uh, Ransom is usually Bitcoin or some other kind of uh, uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, the issue is you have to be quick because they put a timer on it. You have to be find out if you actually have to pay or you can use your backups. But those are the three biggest issues that we're seeing uh, claims from right now. Uh, we insure over 10,000 uh, accountants about 3,000 bookkeepers and tax preparers. So we have a lot of claim history that we uh, pull from. But if we can move on to the next one, I'd like to talk about staying ahead of the bad guys. So how, how do you stay ahead of the bad guys? One way to do that is to create strong passwords, but let's talk about the bad guys for a second. It's estimated that about 51% of uh, the bad guys are, are with organized crime. A few years ago, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, a building in India was raided and about 300 employees were just trying to grab W-2s and tax returns from unsuspecting people in the United States. Uh, the other half of the people are um, people who don't need guns. They're people in their, in their pajamas sitting in their basements uh, just running a program because you can easily start your own hacking business by using the dark web and the dark web is just a place that you can't get to from a normal search engine and you can buy a ransomware kit for only 50 bucks uh, you can buy a ebook on how to fish or how to get email into a system for about 10 bucks and probably the best value is you can buy a thousand credit reports uh, with social security numbers and FICO scores over 120 if you want to start your own uh, credit card business. So what are we supposed to do about this? How do we stay ahead of these bad guys? Well, we really make it easy for them. We have easy passwords. We reuse passwords. We don't keep up the security updates. We use old or longer, no longer supported software and hardware and we don't provide enough training. So the first thing is, let's talk about passwords for a minute. Uh, passwords, nine, 10 years, I've been uh, following a report and I'm sure you can guess it, but the same two passwords are at the top of the list of most used. The first most used password is a series of numbers, one through eight. The second most used password is the word password 
and number six is admin. And it has been that way for six years. One and two switch back and forth, but it's usually, um, it's usually one of those two. So how do we create a stronger password? Well, there's a bunch of things you can do. My suggestion was is to use something called a password vault. If you're not familiar with a password vault, a password vault is a app that you have a master password and then you can use a password generator to create passwords on all of your devices. Uh, some of the most popular are LastPass, uh, Dashlane, and 1Password. They are really cheap. They're like $30 for a year and it works all across all devices. So it's a really good um, uh, way to protect your passwords. If you don't want to use a password, the other thing is to use a passphrase. The longer a password is, the better it is. So if you can get 16, 18, 20 characters, they're going to bypass you because they're looking for passwords of four, six, or eight characters so that they can use brute force to try to figure out what your password is. So the longer the password you use, the better. The issue that we have is that we have over 119 different places that we have to store passwords. Nobody can remember that, so they start reusing passwords. So if you think of a passphrase, and one I could use is three unconnected words. Uh, I drive a Tacoma truck, my dog's name is Obi, and my favorite type of music is the blues. So I could have Obi truck blues as my password. That gives, us, gives me about 15 characters, 15 characters with some uh, separators in between, a dollar sign or uh, uh, ampersand or whatever you want to use, you can put in there. And then you can use prefixes and suffixes for the different things you use, like Gmail 01 uh, would be a good passphrase. Or I just had a grandson, so I could have James Patrick was born on May 15th, 2020. Uh, anything that you can remember that you can use uh, different password that have length. So that's number two. So let's move on to the next wing and thing and talk about a culture of privacy and security. We can move that forward. There we go. Oh, I should have uh, already done this one. I'm sorry. Can we move on to the next one? Here we go. Some of the risks. Uh, that I should have been showing you already. Uh, over half the breaches, we talked about that. They can't. They come from inside. They come from your uh, malware. And most emails deliver the um, malicious emails, ma malicious uh, uh, programs, and. 81% of the, of the hack related breaches are because of weak or stolen passwords. So we already talked about passwords a little bit. Uh, and who's behind these breaches? 75% come from outside, which we talked about, and 51 from inside. Uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, 51 come from criminal groups. Um, the other half come from inside or from vendors. And those uh, inside is because we don't have enough uh, controls on either our, our programs that we're using or we're not providing enough training. And uh, two of the problems are uh, misdelivery of emails. And that's just like it sounds. They got, the stuff is sent to the wrong place. We've had a number of, of breaches that have been because people send their W-2s to their clients, but they misdirect them and they send them to the wrong email address. Or they FedEx them and they never show up at the destination, or they just put them in the mail and they never show up at the destination. The other thing is misconfiguration. You're putting them in the wrong bucket. You're storing them in the wrong place. You're storing them where, they're, where this personally identifiable information is easily accessible. So, number of things uh, to watch out for 
is uh, miscommunication and misdelivery and misconfiguration. And then misuse, illegitimate use, rogue employees is up over 56%. Now what the problem is, is human error. People are the weakest link. That TV show just came back. I don't know if you remember it, but you are the weakest link. So let's move on to the next slide if we could. The problem is that professional services organizations like lawyers and accountants are hard, high target. They have very valuable information and it shows that 35% of all breaches are from professional services organizations and the costs are expensive. The average breach cost last year was about 449,000. The average cost per seat was about 1,700 and the average loss per record was about $436. So if you have a lot of records, it's very likely that it would be very expensive if you lost the data. And then ransom has been going up and up and up. It's up to $109,000 on an average ransom payment. Part of the issue is the fluctuation of cryptocurrency. With ransomware, uh, last year the average days uh, to discover an attack was 207 days. So people sitting in your system because of uh, bad controls um, for up to 207 days, finding ways that they can corrupt your system and get in. Uh, the average ransomware attack uh, took about four to six days to become operational. And that's if everything goes right. You have to have a good backup and they have to provide a good encryption key to get back up totally operational. The really bad news is the, uh, there's been a study that 60% of small businesses uh, can't survive a data breach and are closed or merge up within six months. So this is some serious stuff that we have to watch out for. And let's uh, now move on to the next one, which is cultivating a culture of privacy. When you watch, when you get these emails or these fake emails, you need to be very uh, concerned about what they are, where they're coming from, and not to be fooled. Uh, these uh, emails that you get, um, should be called to make sure that the people that are sending these emails asking for information are actually who you expect them to be because the number in the email is probably uh, spoofed also. So pick up the phone. The other thing is don't fall for it. Don't reply, reply all the forward messages to, from people you don't know. Don't open attachments from people you don't know. Don't click on links. It's not a problem to open the email. It's a problem to click on the links just delete the message. And then don't panic because they're gonna use ways to get you to move quickly. They're gonna use urgent, free, limited offer, cancellation, new business. So try to make sure that you watch out for that. Let's uh, move on to the next one if we could. So let's uh, talk about uh, how we cultivate a uh, culture of privacy quickly. Uh, we talked a little bit about creating a culture of privacy in your organization and it really uh, comes down to uh, your employees. And the most important aspect is to have an open door policy and to have uh, an environment of stewardship of client data. You need to have ongoing awareness, visible, regular communication, you have to do phishing testing, and you have to be a champion uh, of people coming to you with an open door policy. Another thing you can do is adopt a privacy by design uh, approach. Only data that you need to have. Can you get things redacted? Can you redact social security numbers before you store the, the uh, client information? Do you need that date of birth? Uh, what about your retention policy? How many paper records do you have? How long do you keep those paper records? Because most people don't realize that if you have a break-in and your paper records are not secured, you can't prove a negative. 
So that's considered a full data breach. And then what is your disposal uh, policy? How often do you dispose of your records? How do you dispose of your records? What do you, how are you sure they're being disposed of regularly? And how do you make sure that uh, you're disposing of the right thing in the right time? And there's also challenges to this. Most of us have little understanding of, of what the threats are. They were hesitant to ask questions about the threats and uh, assumptions that are being made that uh, employees understand the risks. We provide uh, alerts. Uh, if you wanna join our email list, we provide alerts when you need to, and we uh, help you decide what you uh, should be on the watch for. The last thing, uh, a couple more things really quickly because my time is up. Uh, you need to communicate and exchange data as securely as possible. You can do that in a number of ways and the other guys are gonna be talking about that. Specifically, Chris is gonna be talking about that in more detail. Uh, and then how do you re reduce the risk of loss using the right partners and the right insurance coverage? So briefly, I wanna talk about insurance company. Most people think that their current coverages provide for uh, coverage if you had a breach. In most cases, they're gonna provide for your client's damages and not for your response. A separate liability policy is gonna help you with the response to your client's damages. So it's broken into two parts, a first party and a third party. So the first party is all of your expenses to respond. And the third party is your client damages and credit monitoring services. So it's very important that you understand what you have for a cyber breach because a cyber breach coverage is gonna provide you with a breach coach. It's already vetted all the experts that you'll need when something happens, the IT specialists, the forensic uh, folks, the uh, notification people, the credit monitoring, the regulatory defense, the defense for your client's damages, all of those things are gonna cover you for loss of data. Uh, there's two things to be aware of. Data is covered under a, professional, under a cyber liability policy and money is con covered under a commercial crime policy. If you had a fake email that asked you to transfer funds and you did that inadvertently because you thought it was your client, it is not gonna be covered under a cyber policy it is gonna be covered under a commercial crime policy. So when you think of these types of coverages, cyber liability coverage covers uh, data and commercial crime covers money, whether it's your, your employees stealing from you or the client, or it's from somebody outside the organization stealing uh, client money uh, that you have care, custody and control of and also fake emails where you get an email that says, let's do this, I'm traveling, I need some help, I need you to transfer some funds, and you do it without verification. So those are the, the uh, different um, areas of insurance that I wanted to talk about and some of the risks involved with cyber liability. So now I'm gonna turn it back to Chris and we'll take it from there. Thank you, Rob. You know, every time we hear you speak, uh, we always learn something new. And I think uh, for me, uh, the professionalization of the criminal industry, right, continues to, it just gets crazier and crazier, doesn't it? Um, it reminds me of a story. Uh, you mentioned that a lot of firms can't take the financial hit and merge out or sell. Uh, did you catch that bit with Barbara Kapoor where she went on Good Morning America? Yeah, and she did. Yeah. She yeah. went public with hers, right? Right. She got hoodwinked for 400,000 bucks. That's right. And, you know, fortunately, she could survive the hit. But not only that, fortunately, she had, for all of us, she had the bravery mm -hmm. to go out there and put it in the public eye because you know, obviously this stuff is happening probably more frequently than we're willing to talk about at a cocktail party, right? Right. I could probably take up all the rest of our time talking about some of the claims that we've had and tell you horror stories on what has happened and why trying to figure it out yourself is not always the best idea. Oh boy. Well, October, uh, the season for, for such stories, I suppose. Um, in any case, uh, I, today's topic, uh, as you everybody knows about, is really uh, how to balance security 
and convenience with clients. And so it's a topic that uh, I'm very excited and passionate about, obviously, um, because you can have both. You can have it all. So, um, and, and frankly, it's easier than you think. If, if you think about what's happening today, uh, your clients are already getting security and convenience in most of their financial life. And getting that for your firm is likely going to cost you less than what you might be paying for a collage of software systems already. So, so let's start with the maxim. Um, systems, they're built, right? They're built to simplify our business, not complicate it. So how many of you, just quick show of hands, you know, how many of you have software overload out there? It's okay if you do, right? Most people are feeling that way today. Uh, but let's start with this maxim, right? And let's work backward to see if there's a better way. So what we like to say is client experience 2.0 is here. And I'd like to present you with three very different businesses that all have one thing in common. Each is bending over backwards to meet us where we are and to delight our socks off. And so we have Relay, we have the New York Times, and we have the Home Depot. Relay, which you're gonna hear about right after me, offers secure banking that makes bookkeeping really easy. Fits right in the palm of your hand. The New York Times, well, of course, they stream news right to us anywhere in the world. Home Depot, we all know them. Five-star mobile app, and they support text messaging. Crazy, right? This is banking. This is news. This is retail, right? And the list of modern businesses like, like this goes on and on and on. And so here's the best part. All of these choices complement the traditional business model. You can still visit an ATM. You can still get a paper delivered. You can still go push a shopping cart through the aisle. That's not a problem, right? What's happening right now is we're all gaining options. We're gaining options, we're gaining convenience, and we're losing nothing in the process. These businesses are all fitting right into our lives seamlessly. They're meeting us where we are, where we want to be, right? And they're meeting us in a way that addresses how we want to work with them. They're convenient and they're secure. And this is client experience. This is CX 2.0. Okay. So if we take this, this kind of notion and we contrast it, we contrast it with the state of play for most professional service firms, right? Take a moment, take a moment to reflect on how this makes you feel. How well do you think this, this kind of experience is sitting with your clients? It's probably a bit of a mixed bag. Right, long-term clients, they're, they're fine. They might wanna stick with this. You never know, right? But certainly, how's this gonna meet the expectations of newer clients? How does it help a firm attract new business or keep the finicky clients? Chances are your clients are already signaling, right? And if you're like most professional service firms, you get a lot of your business from referrals. Uh, quick little story, one of our, one of our team members, uh, his dad's accountant, is trying to attract him as the next generation, right? Because his dad's retiring. So he's trying to do that in a way, not kidding, by literally stuffing envelopes and sending something in the mail saying, hey, you know, here's some of my services, et cetera, you might want to work with me. He's saying, I'm never going to work with paper, right? And so you think about addressing a new generation of buyer. Well, that's trying to use the old mode, you know, and, and chances are your clients are already signaling whether or not they're happy. And so what I'd like to do is present you with just a couple of lines that you might have heard before. These are little signals, right? Little signals. Each of these represents an opportunity, an opportunity to make a client a little bit happier and probably a little more secure too, right? And what do we get when we make a client happier? Well, all sorts of good things. Clients are more likely to deliver what we need on time. We can spend less time doing tech support. We can get more referrals. We can churn fewer accounts. And we can keep private data private. And so here's a secret that we've learned over the last couple of years. Most firms are hyper-focused on internal friction, right? And less focused on the client experience. 
and this is from a simple bit that they're not really realizing. They're so, I think we're so used to these problems just kind of being there all the time. We've forgotten that there might be a better way. And we've forgotten that you might be able to link the benefits of a good client experience with less internal friction in the firm. And there's one more argument you might want to make, which is the biggest cost in most firms is the revenue that they're not making. Right? So how do we, how do we do better? How do we do better? Well, you start with another very simple, very simple maxim. Clients want easy, right? Clients want easy. So what does that mean? Well, obviously, you know, if you're paying for something in retail, what do you do? You double click on your phone, you face ID, you hold up to a reader and you're done. You don't even have, you don't even have a number that a, a, a criminal can go after, right? Nobody's seeing it. It's just a click and magic. You can sign things with your finger. How easy is that for a client, right? When I get something signed, oh, there it is, Ding. there it is, I'm done. And you wanna have your financial data right at your fingertips. Maybe be able to you know, have clients self-service, grab their own tax return, right? So remember, these aren't or propositions. If you have a client who prefers paper, right? They don't work online, they don't have a smartphone, keep them where they are. That's totally fine. But for everyone who does have a smartphone, it's never too soon to start building your client experience 2.0 bridge to them, right? And so with that, what I'd like to do is to show you briefly our take, our take on client experience 2.0 for the accounting profession. Uh, this is my phone in real time. <clears throat> and many of you have struggled with clients who can't log into something. You know, that's, that's real, right? But in five minutes, in five minutes or fewer, I'm gonna show you how you can address just about every problem I showed you earlier. So start with signing in. Use your thumbs, use Google, use Microsoft, or use your face. Your clients have probably multiple of these at their disposal, so it's their choice. I'm gonna click on Google, <clears throat> tap, tap, I'm gonna be in. And when I'm in, what you're going to see is this is going to be a quiet place for you to work with them. Okay. So what do I have? I have an inbox with two items and I have a task list with four items. It's not cluttered. It's not a big messy place for them to work with you. It's all right here. So, you know, if I have something from Tim, it says, please send, need that signature ASAP. I can come out here. I'll get that to you right away, period. Thank you for the reminder, period. Okay, if they can text their thumbs or they can speak into their phone, you're gonna be in good shape. Pretty easy, right? If you wanna get something from them, many of you have probably played arts and crafts before, right? With getting a text message of a JPEG photo that's off angle, terrible lighting, the whole thing. Arts and crafts time, how much time does that take you? Well, it's not only bad for you, it's bad for your clients, but with us, add attachments, scan document, I've got an 8879 right here, hold above my desk with one foot, with one hand, it's gonna automatically figure out where the edges are. It's gonna automatically go ahead and straighten it out. Obviously it has wrinkles in this paper, that's okay. Turns it into a PDF, take multiple pages, multiple scans if you want, upload it and send it. Couldn't be easier for your clients, okay? It just goes on and on like that, right? I'll go ahead and archive that. If I wanna get something signed, I can go ahead and it says, please sign tax questionnaire. I can tap on that. Well, they know what they owe you. Tasks three, right? Well, tasks have due dates. They have comments from you. They have an audit trail of all the activity. You know, did we ask them? Or the client says, you didn't ask me. It's, it's addressed right here. Review and sign, they tap it. <clears throat> and guess what? They can sign with their finger, okay? They pop in here. There's the whole document. This one's a rather long one, but they can go through the document, sign, sign like that and they're done, okay? So it's, it's providing convenience in a way that they can actually use it. And of course, if they wanna find a file, all their files are here, easily searched and done. So this is the way, this is the way that people are interacting today in their personal financial lives, and you have a way to address that with them as well, okay? So I promised you just a couple of minutes there, um, but that should show you, give you a sense of just how easy it can be. So, so the takeaways, security and convenience, they go hand in hand now, right? 
It's not an either or. And that's where we want to invite you to think about avoiding the false dilemma. All right, the false dilemma is it's an, it's an either or, right? Which is not what this is. We're now in the age of and. Um, I think a lot of companies have gone down the path of a false dilemma. Blockbuster video, remember them? No, it's analog or it's digital, pick one. The real answer was, well, have both, right? What about Kodak? Analog film versus digital, you know? So there are old ways and newer ways of thinking. And for business owners, you know, particularly in today's day and age, we're looking for the ants. So consider building your bridge from where you are today to where you and your clients want to be together tomorrow. That's the idea. That's the idea behind Lysio and CX 2.0. Yosef, I'd like to hand it to you. You're on mute. I am on mute. There we go. Uh, great success. Um, hundred percent agreed, right? It's like, you know, uh, I think we all kind of wish there was this perfect transition plan where I just flick a switch and then everything's just magically better. Uh, unfortunately, I think as we all learn, it's life doesn't work that way. It doesn't work in our personal lives like that. It doesn't work in our professional lives like that. You've got to work at it. Um, and you have to start somewhere. Um, so, uh, you know, coming back to that theme of like, you know, convenience plus security. That's really the critical piece. Um, my background, yes, uh, you know, I'm one of the co-founders of Relay. Prior to that, I worked at a business called HubDoc where we, you know, helped you centralize all, you know, your small business key financial documents. And we dealt with security uh, a lot. Um, you know, when we talk about internal threat vectors, like all that stuff, we thought about all of this. Um, it's definitely uh, something I've spent uh, more time on in my career than I ever expected. Um, which is quite, I guess, cool uh, or not. I don't know. Um, anyways, so the core challenges that every firm has as it relates to, you know, banking information, I think would be threefold. One is actually seeing statements like bank statements emailed, uh, you know, and emails are not as secure as I think we all hope they are. Uh, I think we've all been guilty of actually emailing our bank statements, perhaps to our tax accountant or to our, you know, our, our outsourced accountant or bookkeeper, um, as well as like emailing, like sensitive data. Um, I, I can't tell you how often this happens. Uh, there are great uh, Chrome add-ons uh, that you can use um, uh, to actually like kind of secure your information as it's being shared if you're using email. I think they're really clunky. I think they suck. I try to get other people to use them. They don't. Um, if I'm working with clients, I'm using Lysio for that. Like just, you see, you saw how easy that was. Um, and really like just being able to message and do that um, is, is magical. Uh, I can promise it's better than the alternatives that we try to use in our own business. Two, sharing client credentials. Um, I know we're kind of in a better world now where you know you have LastPass or what have you, but the number of times I've seen a notebook stuck in a drawer with clients' login credentials uh, would make you feel as nauseous as I feel describing it. I can viscerally you know view that first moment where I saw that. Um, it's terrible. It creates liability on your end. It creates risk for the business owner. It's just not a great setup. Um, and we all know the underlying challenge there, right? Access to information is critical. Um, and if you don't have access, you have to find a way. And SMBs are like, you know what? The chance of you actually stealing my money is so low. I'm just going to hand this over. Not a great solution for anyone. They're not happy about it. You're not happy about it. Um, and lastly, uh, bank feeds in QuickBooks Online, in Zero, they break. Uh, they break a lot. Um, the same technology that is used for bank feeds in those accounting software is the technology that we used at HubDoc to download bank statements. We were pretty good at it and they would work about 70% of the time. They would break constantly. It was not great. Um, and so we'll talk about kind of what the challenges are that exist there um, and how you can actually go ahead and solve it. So this is what we see. Um, I love the, by the way, this is this photo here is one of my team members, uh, Henry. So I, his name is not Bruce, uh, but I love, I love this email um, because I think we've all done this, right? We've sent that e email with the 12 statements that we were, that were requested, definitely missed one of them, of course, because uh, you know, we thought we had everything and we didn't. We've had the experiences where two FA codes are coming in for our clients. Perhaps we're asking them, we're doing this little dance, hoping that they're available so that I can actually get the information I need to be able to just do my job. Uh, which sucks. Uh, and then three, uh, you know, as we talked about, 
the bank feeds, they break. This is the number one feature request that QuickBooks Online gets. It's the number one feature request that Zero gets because there's 5,000 financial institutions in the US um, that, all, that basically all connect in the same way. Um, and it's, it's deeply insecure and it creates a lot of downstream problems as we talked about. And of course, Relay is the perfect solution for all of those problems. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, uh, that core problem that we talked about of like access to financial information and how insecure it can be with the traditional ways that it is that we approach it uh, in the industry, um, that was really kind of the genesis for Relay. It was like, how do we enable access to financial data? And does this enable increased financial visibility for small business owners and a better client experience? Um, and how do you do that? And what we realized as we were exploring that idea was that the only way to solve uh, for this challenge was actually to become the bank and to attack it kind of at a foundational level. Um, so Relay is like business banking that makes bookkeeping easy. Um, and we're gonna jump into the product in just one second. There are three things that accountants and bookkeepers love about Relay. Number one, you see this, you get your own partner portal. So you get your own login, you can manage access to your different Relay accounts, you can manage your staff's access to the Relay accounts with different permission levels. It's pretty sweet. Number two, we are one of eight, eight banks out of the 5,000 that actually directly integrate into the accounting system. So it's API to API, it's not using screen scraping, which is what breaks very consistently. So it's API to API, it's super reliable. And then three, we enrich and standardize all the data it is quote unquote, a bookkeeper's dream. So no more check one, two, three, four, you actually get the check information inside of QuickBooks Online or inside of Zero, or you can just look at it inside of Relay. So let's do a lightning fast uh, demo here. So before I, before I do that, the customer promise for small business owners is banking designed for growing businesses. Three things people love is that you can collaborate really easily with your team because we have a user permission model you can manage all your bills inside of Relay. So we integrate into both QBO and Zero to automatically pull in unpaid bills. You have approval workflows, you have financial controls, really easy. And you can manage all your business spending from inside your Relay account using Relay cards. We do all of this in conjunction with a bank called Evolve Bank and Trust. They are the underlying financial institution behind Relay. They have half a billion dollars in assets. They've been around since like 1925. It's almost 100 years. Um, and it's through them that we're able to offer FDIC insured accounts um, up to 250K. So let's log in quickly. And I promise Chris, this will be sub five minutes. So I am gonna let this rip really quickly. Um, cool, so this is the partner portal. We are collectively Skylar Hunting. This is our firm, South Boston Bookkeeping. Sign up for Relay, you know, you can test it out yourself. So a lot of firms actually go ahead and register for their own Relay account. You can sign up online inside of 10 minutes, no paperwork, no branch, no people. You can invite clients, so you know typical workflow. So you can do Jane at business.com. That kicks out an invite to Jane. She can sign up online inside of 10 minutes. No paperwork, no branch, no people. Um, and then you can also manage your staff access to different client accounts. So I've got Sean here. I can give him read-only access at the click of a button. I can also give him like bill pay access. And if he touches any money inside of a relay account, you get an audit trail attached. So you can see how security and is enabled here while also making it super convenient for your practice and your clients. So now we've kind of talked about this access challenge, direct bank feeds, user permission model, all really easy. Now let's just jump straight into a small business account. So this is what it looks like for you viewing your small business client's account, but it also is how it looks for them. So we talked about access, quality of information is critical. When a check is deposited inside of Relay, you see the payer's name, the amount, the date, who deposited it, an image of the check itself. So you don't have to go fishing inside the state, you know, inside the statement to find that, those check images and then try and read uh, whatever the heck's on that check. Um, you can also see the note. All this information is passed across into QuickBooks Online, into Zero, so it makes bookkeeping really easy. Um, all card transaction data is standardized and enriched. So Facebook comes through as Facebook, Uber is Uber, Starbucks is Starbucks. Um, it's not messy and you get category information per transaction. So it's just less back and forth with your clients. Um, you can have up to 20 bank accounts with Relay. There are real bank accounts with an account number and routing number. So you can segregate funds, manage your risk across different accounts, really handy. Uh, no account fees, no minimum balances. You can have up to 50 Relay cards. These are Relay MasterCard debit cards. Um, they can be physical cards or virtual cards. So some people for security set up virtual cards for each subscription that they have. Um, and so if any of those cards ever got compromised, they would just shut it off, spin up a new one really easy. 
Um, you can set up limits, you can control who has access, all this good stuff. And then on the payment side, uh, we integrate into both QuickBooks Online and Xero to automatically pull in unpaid bills. So you can see that here, we have approval workflow, so you can actually submit it for approval. Um, and then once it's approved, you can initiate payment. Uh, once we initiate payment on a bill, we mark the bill as paid inside of the accounting system. And then because we're the, the bank, um, once that payment settles, we send across the bank fee transaction and it just matches up. It's like magic. You have no clearing account, really easy. Um, and security, of course, is critical. So we have real two-factor authentication, no SMS codes. Uh, you can see the session activity, who's actually logged in. Um, and as I mentioned, you can control all your integrations inside of Relay uh, from one kind of portal and one login. So let's get back here. I think, Chris, I hope I did that in five minutes. Uh, otherwise, I went way too fast. <laughs> we're, right on, we're right on schedule. We're right on schedule. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Um, and so, you know, implementing a solution like this basically does three things. One is it reduces firm liability. Uh, you're no longer holding on to bank logins. You're no longer having, uh, you know, important information being transmitted in an insecure manner. So no more statements by email. You will actually have them inside of your Relay account. Soon you'll actually be able to have them auto-forwarded into HubDoc or Receipt Bank. Um, or whatever solution you might use. Two, you're going to have a smoother customer experience. You're going to have to ask your clients for less stuff. Really critical. No one likes to be asked to do more things. Um, two, it's all going to be secure. It's going to be convenient. And then three, because we have a direct bank feed with enriched data, it's going to be faster to actually do the bookkeeping uh, for those clients. We have, uh, you know, kind of really impressive firms that use Relay, and they actually charge the clients that don't use Relay more money because it just takes them longer to actually do the work. All right, so I think it should be easy as one, two, three, right? Um, putting it all together here. So will we know? Well, one, clients want easy. Two, firms, we all want security. Three, design your business for both. You can have both. It's a matter of design. It's a matter of choosing intentionally how you want your firm to, to operate and how you want your clients to interface with you, right? Which we know has a lot to do with choice. So design, so it should be that easy. One, two, three, right? So let's go, we had a few questions come in, I believe. Why don't we go through a few of those? Yeah, so um, we have a number of, let's see. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll do, um, we've got a juicy one for Rob that we're gonna have Rob answer in a minute. Uh, but we had a couple come in for Yosef. Um, so Yosef, uh, Howard is asking, will Relay give us all an invitation to sign up with them? So sounds Absolutely. like you've got someone who's interested. So I think we can say yes, we'll send you, we'll send you an invitation. Um, and then he has a subsidiary question. Uh, Relay is talking about QBO and zero integration. What about a desktop solution like QuickBooks Desktop? Does it work with QB Desktop? Yeah, so we in, we make it possible to actually export uh, a lot of our information because we think data portability is really critical. So you can download via CSV or OFX um, and upload straight to, to QuickBooks Desktop. Okay, okay, great. Um, uh, we have one uh, for Chris on costing. What does um, uh, Lysio cost? Oh, sure. Uh, depending on firm size, we have a pricing plan that's based on the number of people inside the firm. You get unlimited clients. And with the price I'm about to offer, uh, you're going to get unlimited data storage. There's a lot you get. You get text messaging for your clients. You get the mobile app for your clients. You get the mobile app for your firm. There's an awful lot under the hood. And our pricing tends to be not so different from what you would pay just for storage alone. So one user, one practitioner in the firm, $50 a month. It's on par with all the major storage players. You get that and a heck of a lot more. So I, I invite you to uh, take a look at our Lysio.me uh, website and our pricing is listed there. Yeah, it's all listed there. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, another one for, um, uh, for Yosef uh, from Sue. What kind of detail is available for Amazon transactions when using Relay? So uh, I guess it depends what type of Amazon transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, so is this a deposit? Is this you know an Amazon expense? Um, for for expenses, we standardize to like Amazon 
we actually, depending on the Amazon service that you're using, so it could be Amazon Books, Amazon Ads, Amazon, you know, Amazon Web Services, we break it out. Uh, so you actually get the category information depending on what's relevant. Um, I know from kind of past experience that what you, what you might be really looking for here is, um, you know, when your client buys a bunch of different things on Amazon and you want really that breakout of all the different categories, mm -hmm. um, that isn't something we do today. That is something we hope to be able to do uh, in, in the future. I think there are other apps that can handle that as well. So that might be something to talk to, you know, someone who specializes with integrations. Um, yeah. Good to know that you're thinking about it, though, as, as, as a big, important problem. Um, Kelly says, Kelly Park says, hi, Yosef. And, um, and she says, uh, Relay is on in the U.S. still, correct? Uh, yep. So we're, we're live in the U.S. Hi, Kelly. Uh, <laughs> we're live in the U.S. and, uh, and Canada is, is coming. It is coming. I'm okay. not giving a firm date because I've gotten in trouble with that in the past. Okay. It so is, it's in, uh, it, yeah, she says waving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and then we had a really juicy one for Rob. Um, and Rob, I think you read it. It's in the Q&A, but so that everybody can hear it is, uh, Terry is asking, is Google Chrome password service as effective as a vault? I would say, uh, no, it isn't. Uh, I would use a password vault as opposed to Chrome uh, password service. And the reason is you don't have the uh, flexibility and you don't, and if they get into your Chrome system, they're going to get into your passwords. They'll be able to access everything. So I would not use Google Chrome password service right. myself. I would use password vault. That's great. We did have quite a lot of discussion um, in the chat about, um, you know, which, which passwords, uh, password services people were using, uh, RoboForm, LastPass. Um, we had a little chit chat back and forth about, um, tips to you know like never log in from an email that's one where you can keep your firm just keep everybody safe yourself included you know um you know my mother's 80 and has she's always the person in line for an iphone and she's always trying to log in through the like and i'm like no 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 you go to your computer for that <laughs> you don't log in you don't click an email don't log in from an email i think that's yes. a really good that's a really good point because the fishers and the spammers are so good aren't they Yes, they are. Yeah. If, you don't, if you don't know where the link is coming from, don't click on it. If you didn't request it, don't click on it. Right. Uh, if, that's the best thing you can do. And Rob, I keep getting a text message from Urgent, my package at USPS. I'm not expecting <laughs> a package. I just delete those. I certainly yeah. don't click on those. That's yeah. good. It's coming up to that time with the holidays around the corner, FedEx, UPS, yeah. you'll get those. Tax season's right around the corner. Yeah. Um, they'll start sending emails out asking, you know, I'd like to get a new accountant or a tax preparer. Would you take a look at my last year's return? And everybody wants new business. So right away they click on the link to yeah, look yeah. at their tax return. So, you know, that, it's time Don't for that. Don't do it, people. Don't coupons, do it. Coupons also. You know, it's uh, donut day, it's coffee day, it's get a free car wash day, it's whatever day people can and think that of. was an expensive car wash, wasn't it, that you That's ended right. up getting? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think, um, oh, looks like we might have another question coming in. Oh, question for Rob from Rich. Um, is there a list of questions you could provide that I can ask a potential cybersecurity firm? I want to get someone to do a detailed review of my hardware and software. We actually have an interesting solution for that, um, Chris and Rob. So um, when Rob gives his answer, then maybe Chris can uh, talk about Tech Guru. So I do have a list uh, that I can provide you if you want to email me. Uh, it's Rob Perini at McGowan Professional. Um, so we can help with that. Uh, it is difficult to find somebody who is qualified. They might say they are, but the, if they're not using certain protocols, you know, you want to you want to use certain yeah. protocols to make sure you have the right security review. So, Rob, I think I'd like to go one one further. And in addition to giving your information, your your email, which you've kindly provided, I think what I'd like to do is to um, have someone on this team send that out. If you could give it to us, we can send it out to all the registrants. Oh. Uh, I think that would just be a huge value add. 
Sure. Um, feels like if it's good for one person, everybody should be aware everybody of what you should it. ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they can engage with you directly with an email. You know, you could put your email in there. But Chris, you also had a solution that we were talking about. Oh, you're on mute. Chris, you're on mute. Yeah, there we go. Um, there it is. Uh, so we, as you all know, 95% um, of our clients are in the accounting profession. And so we have the benefit of intersecting and interacting with so many firms out there. One accounting specific IT firm has done really well um, by our clients. So uh, I can recommend them simply based on uh, experience. They are Tech Guru, Tech Guru. So the website is techguruit.com. Um, again, they're accounting profession specific, very nice people. Uh, I'd give them a look if, you, um, if you're in market or you know, want to talk to somebody with this, that just does this for a living. Great. And Yosef, I want to give you, is there anything you would add to that conversation about, you know, security or passwords or banking or gosh, just have at it. I want to give you equal time. No, I mean, you, my, my greatest recommendation, obviously, is what I'm working on today, which is to use Relay. That would be the most secure way. That there you, you go. Can. Good one. Good, Good easy one. solve. Easy solve. It's never yeah. that simple, but I wish it was. Yeah. Wonderful. And Chris has put that in the, thank you, Chris. Um, Micah Thor is the contact at techguruit.com. So if anybody wants to take advantage of that. Um, great. I don't, do we have any, do we have any questions from the, from the audience or is there anything? We have, well, while they're doing that, Allison, I think we have two quick promotions to get to. So why don't we, um, great. You have the screen. Why don't we go ahead and get to next slide. There's one question that just popped in there. I'll just answer it quickly. Does Relay support uh, smaller banks? Um, so Relay is, is the bank account. Um, and so you can connect to 100% of banks across the United States, whether we're talking about Wells Fargo, Citibank, Bank of America, all the way down to kind of smaller regional banks. Um, and you can link it up and move funds across uh, really easily. Fantastic. Uh, two quick ones. I think we're almost out of time here. So um, two quick, quick promotions on this page. Um, if you have an interest in Lysio uh, and you want to get started, we have $100 off a setup with us. We bring all your data in. We do all the training. It's all uh, based in North America. So uh, you can take advantage of that this month. And then if you're in the market for cyber liability and data breach response insurance, McGowan Pro gives 20% off to off of that policy to all Lysio clients. Okay, so take advantage of that as well. And Yosef, you have one more? Perfect, awesome. Uh, if you'd love to learn more about Relay, simply visit relayfi.com slash partners. Uh, it's really easy banking. Um, you know, you get, as we talked about, access to clients banking from your Relay partner portal. You get to enjoy actually reliable bank feeds and enriched data, and you get bill pay baked in, like really great online bill pay with approval workflows that help centralize the information, have financial controls baked in, and reconciliation is super simple. Uh, yep, you can go to relayfi.com slash partners and sign up. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. A great service, a great service. We're right at time, so. That's amazing. Thank you, thank you all three of you. I, um, I really enjoyed that. I learned that hour went super fast. And I, I love the different angles that each, each of you are coming at with the security and also just treating your clients well and, 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 and having like a happy life and over, overall. I just, <laughs> I just feel like we've got the solution here. So Rob helps us sleep at night. Chris helps us deal with client interruptions and, and data, you know, data going back and forth. And Yosef takes all the headaches out of banking. So I feel very, I feel very relaxed. I hope everybody feels that way too. So good. So this good. has been great. Like a head massage. Okay. Like a head <laughs> massage. There you go. All right. Thank you all for attending. All right, everybody. Thank you, Thank you for attending. Bye. 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 Thanks.